morning, everyone. It's a little bit wet, dismal out there, but we can change that in here, can't we? Yeah, let's lift our voices and stand up, and we're going to sing all creatures. We can be some creatures to start. <laughs> But uh, you know what? We need it, and it's a beautiful rain. Somebody said to me a few times, remember your baptism as it's raining, and it just brings that whole thing of grace to us. Welcome to those who are worshiping with us online. God bless you as we all worship together. Please join me for the call to worship. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the earth rejoice and be glad. Let the heavens be righteousness. May all people see your glory, O God. May your ways be known throughout the earth. People of God, let us worship the God who loves us. We come to worship with open hearts to raise our voices with thanks and praise. Joyce. 
I was so excited about Doug's footage, I forgot we're going back into that hymn. Right, Stand true. back up, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. God of promise and purpose, we greet you this day with thankful hearts. As buds and flowers open, the beauty of your world lifts our spirits in praise. As children grow and students prepare to graduate, their energy and enthusiasm encourage us towards your future. Your world is full of such variety and detail. We stand in awe of your creative imagination. We come before you with thankful hearts, thankful for the many gifts you have given us. You have clothed us and given us shelter. You have given us food to fill our stomachs, friendship to fill our hearts. And yet, if we are honest with you, we know that we fail to follow your life-giving ways. We fail to recognize your glory and provision in our midst. Instead of trusting your power, we trust in our own strength. Instead of trusting in your provision, we rely on our own ability to provide. And it would come, when it comes to your community, we only commit so much. We care too highly for our own ways, our own thoughts, our own perspectives, and not nearly enough on your word and your influence on our lives. We confess that we often place our hopes in the powers that we see in the world, allowing ourselves to be lifted and brought down by people and institutions that are flawed and fleeting. We also confess that we do not always seek the goodness and opportunity that you may allow those powers to bear. Help us to become faithful citizens who focus on your kingdom while seeking your will for us. Lord, as you reveal your glory to us through the signs laid out in your word, please help us to see you. 
holy and righteous God, humbly we come to you asking for your forgiveness. Too often we find ourselves acting as if the promises within your word are not true. Give us faith and courage to put our hope and trust in you. You alone are God, and you provide us with everything we could ever need. Be glorified in our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and set free from sin and sorrow. Christ comes into every shadow corner of our lives with the light of the resurrection. Christ comes and gifts us with grace and hope. Christ comes to fill us with peace, that we may proclaim the good news of mercy and forgiveness. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Scripture reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 to 21. Joseph forgives his brothers. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
So today, people of God, we are going to talk about Joseph. We're going to see a picture of his beautiful coat, or from the rendition probably from the Broadway musical that was put on, 60s, and then later on, Andrew Lloyd Webber in the 90s. Quite a story. And the little piece of scripture that we heard today is kind of close to the end of that section, of that particular story. But what I want to do is I would just like to read just the focus verse, if you will, for today. And that is taken from Genesis 50. Just going to underline it. It was read earlier by Lillian, and I just uh, want to read it again. Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So we're going to talk today about trust. And over the years, and just lately, um, with everything happening in the world, I've been asked by a number of people, how do we trust in God, right? We know it. We hear the word. We pray. But we trust? And this next two sermons will not be the final answer on it at all, because you need to practice it. Let's pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth, meditation of all our hearts together, be pleasing and be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So there's a picture of the beautiful coat. And uh, I think a lot of you know the story of Joseph, and I'm just going to say a few things just to build the context a little bit. Joseph was uh, one of the many sons of Jacob in the line of Jesus um, from the early days, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob had two wives, Anybody want to tell me the names of the two wives? Leah and uh, Rachel, right? Then he had a couple of concubines as well. Had a number of sons by the wives and concubines. Rachel was, unfortunately, he he had a favorite wife. And uh, he loved the children, the two children that uh, Rachel gave him. Joseph was the older one, and Benjamin the younger one. And uh, Jacob actually had favoritism. And I know as a parent, it's really important that we don't do that, right? It's, but he, it was clear to the other brothers that he was favored. Uh, hence, this beautiful coat. And to be fair to the brothers, Joseph did rub it in uh, a little bit. <laughs> He he wasn't a saint either, okay? Uh, And then he was told by Jacob, see how your brothers are doing as they were off to war and so on. And they go there and they think now's their chance. They're going to tell their dad that their son was killed. His son, rather, Joseph, was killed by an animal. They put blood on this favorite coat that he was wearing and they sold him into slavery. They brought the news back to Jacob, and Jacob was just beside himself with grief. Thought his son, favorite son, I guess, died. 
So, we know the story. He goes into Egypt, and uh, he has some skills. He's got some gifts, and uh, he's, he's moving upward in mobility in Egypt. Even though he is a slave, he uh, gets to have some special positions in, the, uh, in Egypt. And then he becomes a ruler. But Joseph endured much trouble and suffering along the way. He was accused of advancing on Potiphar's wife. She lied, and he was put back into prison. And then it became clear that he could interpret dreams as well. Again, he was risen in mobility. He had twists and turns in his life. And it, when it seemed like things might be getting better for Joseph, something else happened. But then he was able to maintain his leadership and privilege in Egypt. Started as a slave. It's important for us to look at this story, I think, because it just shows how things can go well and then they don't go well, and then they go well again, and don't go well. And then sometimes you think, oh man, two steps forward, three steps back. How do you trust in God when things are like that? Having trust in the Lord gives us contentment and confidence in spite of our vulnerabilities. Trusting our lives with God takes courage, but also practice. And it takes courage because you put your weight on God, right? So often, we want to fix things ourselves. We kind of get into the habit of that. And, uh, and the fixing sometimes is just getting into worry, anxiety, and thinking somehow that will help. So Genesis 50 brings us to the moment when Joseph's father, Jacob, has died. Okay? And the brothers of Joseph worry that he might punish them. They come before him. They even say they will be his slaves. And then Jesus, or then Joseph, rather, he says, even though you intended to do harm to me. God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. Joseph was able to trust in God to forgive his brothers. Joseph looked beyond their actions and his actions as well, of course, to the ultimate purposes of God. You see, God desires to save his people. He desires to save us. He desires that we have abundant life, to have it to the full. God is at work in the twists and the turns of life, and he has, is still at work today in our lives. And the Holy Spirit is the presence that is around us. The gift, the advocate that Jesus gave to us. Next week, we're going to talk more about the Holy Spirit and the week after, on the week of Pentecost. We're always told to have faith and to trust in God. But so often, we can do that. We say, yes, let's leave it at Jesus' feet. So we carry our big burden. And sometimes it's really heavy. By the way, I put an extra book in here this morning. <laughs> and then we go back to the Word. We go back to prayer. I just want to say within the camera here. And we put the burden down. Oh, oh that feels good. Right? We can relate to that. But then something else happens and oh, we pick it back up. 
we get in the habit of picking it up. And we hurt ourselves. And Jesus says, where is your faith? Put your burdens on me, and I will give you rest. It's important that we tell each other, put your burdens down. Trust. And then the person we say that to will say it to us again. We need each other to do that. Here's some reasons why we should trust in God. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet! Be still! Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. From Mark 4. I love this story. And one of my favorite parts of it is, Jesus is asleep in the boat, right? Like the winds are going like crazy, and he is super calm. And they wake him up, and he goes, yeah, what's going on? <laughs> and we can trust in God in the same way, right? There's turmoil around us. And remember Jesus in the boat. He knows better than we do. It's going to be all right. There's twists and turns. There's ups and downs. But it will be okay. Don't be afraid. Another one, another one is all things are possible with God. Jesus said to him, if you are able, all things can be done for the one who believes. All things are possible with God. Okay, so God knows us so completely. God is a personal God. He's a God of creation, created the universe, the world. But he's also a personal God that knows us completely. If you feel like your goals are hard to achieve or even impossible, think again. Anything is possible with God. In God's will, of course. Right? And God's will is for goodness in our lives. Not an easy life, necessarily, but that we have joy and that we have abundance and we know His presence. When we come to the Lord and lay our burdens on Him, we are free in his love and in love we expand we can be who we're meant to be and the holy spirit sustains us it's amazing what you can do with the power of god and we i'm sure we have some people here who can give a testimony on that god is worthy of our trust we can trust in the lord with all our heart because he loved us so much that he died for us, and he rose from the dead. We can trust him. It happened in history. And what happened with Joseph is all part of the plan, right? God's grace, as we see fully in Jesus Christ, came through Joseph as he forgave his brothers. You don't do that as a ruler. You've got to tell everybody that you are powerful and anybody who goes against you will burn will be disciplined severely it was so unusual in those days for that to happen and it's all in line with the nature of God in the New Testament and then Jesus came in the fullness of time to show us 100% the nature of who God is this piece of scripture, it might be a favorite scripture for some of you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Do not rely 
on your own insight. We so often have it figured out. God desires that we trust Him. Another reason why we can trust God is that God knows what God is doing. Okay? For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. As the prophet Isaiah is speaking to the Israelites who so continually went against the will of God and went toward the way of the world of injustice, oppression. As soon as they got a bit wealthy, things went south, eh? Yet, the people of Israel heard these words through the prophet Jeremiah, inspired to Jeremiah, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare, not for harm, to give you a future with hope. God knows all things and does have a purpose for you. We have a personal God, a mighty creator God of the universe. We also have a personal God. We are called to lay our burdens down and keep it there. And that trust in God helps us remember that things will work out. There's a story, a proverb, an ancient proverb that goes like this. There was a farmer and a son, and they had this stallion. And one day, and the stallion, rather, was to help them to make a living on the farm the important animal. One day, the stallion got out. It was gone. The means for income. So the neighbors said, that's terrible. That's so unlucky. Your stallion is gone. The farmer said, maybe so. Maybe not. We'll see. Then a few days later, the stallion comes back, and he's got an, about a few mares behind him. And they all go into the corral, and the, neighbor, and the farmer shuts the gate. The neighbors say, how lucky is that? Your stallion was gone, and now you've got three mares. That is so amazing. You are so lucky. The farmer said, maybe so, maybe not. We will see. So the son was training one of the mares to break the mare so they could use it for work. And the mare reared up and threw the son to the ground. And the son broke his leg. The neighbors say, that is terrible. That is so unlucky. Your son broke his leg. leg. That is terrible luck. The farmer said, maybe so. Maybe not. We'll see. So then uh, a few weeks later, some soldiers rode into ta town from the, from the king and was looking to enlist young men for the army. And they came to the farm, and the son was still convalescing, was still uh, recovering from his injury, so they did not take him to war. And the neighbors came over. What luck! That is so awesome. Your son doesn't have to go to war. He is saved. Maybe so. Maybe not, said the farmer. We'll see. In other words, time will tell the whole story. And these are the words again from Joseph. Even though you intended to do harm to me, 
God intended it for good, used it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. God, people of God, looks beyond our actions and the things that happen to us to God's ultimate purpose. God desires to save people and to give them a future, to give them hope, and to give them abundant life. We can trust that as we go through the twists and the turns of life. We can trust that God will work it for good. It's not so much what happens to you, but how you trust in God's faithfulness in spite of the circumstances. And not to diminish some of the very terrible circumstances we have in the world that people are suffering under. But we know that the Lord has won the victory in Christ. And we know that every little thing that goes wrong that we can stew so much about isn't the end result. God can work things out for good in our lives. And we can trust that. And when we trust that, the Holy Spirit can work through us. And we can be courageous. And we can trust a little more. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Shall we pray? Lord, our God, the earth and all its people belong to you. As we come before you in prayer, we're painfully aware that the earth itself is at risk from the ways your people live on it and the conflicts we provoke among each other. We seek your healing and hope this day for the earth and all its creatures and for your people of every nation. God of healing and hope, we pray for peace with justice to emerge in war-torn lands and in every place of conflict where power struggles put innocence at risk. We name before you, Lord, the people and places on our hearts today as we pray silently at this time. Dear God, we pray for those in our congregation who are ill at home or in hospital. We know them by name. We pray for those who mourn. Lord, we pray that you give them your peace with your promises. Lord, be with each one of us as we come to you learning to trust and practicing to trust in you. Thank you for your spirit to help us. Send your spirit of wisdom and compassion to break open the hearts, Lord, of leaders, to work with each other to protect the innocent and restore order for the well-being of all. May your ways of truth and justice prevail in every heart and in every land. God of healing and hope, we pray for Presbyterian World Service and development and its partners and all groups offering aid and renewal in places where disaster and conflict have left people at risk. Support those who have lost homes, families, and livelihoods to find courage to go on and open hearts of those in safety to share with those in need. Help them, Lord, to trust in you. God of healing and hope, we know that this land we call home faces conflict and pain and that communities are divided by deep disagreements. We pray for healing and understanding to deepen relationships between indigenous people and those who settled this land. Lord, protect those who faced racist, racist attitudes and actions in daily life. And restore dignity and hope to those who have suffered injustice in a system that benefited others. Open our eyes to the creativity and courage in communities that feel unfamiliar to us. And open our hearts to build new relationships with each other so we grow closer as neighbors and as friends. Help us remember that all of us are made in God's image. God of healing and hope. We pray for the renewal of your creation and for the protection of species at risk. By your Spirit, God, teach us to change our ways when they are harmful to the earth and inspire our ingenuity to find solutions to problems that seem so vast. God of healing and hope, we pray for those who know, sick, who know sickness or pain, for all who live in grief, loneliness, or anxiety and all who find these uncertain times overwhelming in any way. By your Spirit, Lord, surround each one with strength and love, and equip us to offer support for those whose lives are woven into ours. God of healing and hope, Jesus walks with us day by day to see us through every challenge, and so we can claim the healing and hope he offers in the words of he taught us to pray, shall we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Nancy.
Good morning. <clears throat> trust, <coughs> excuse me. Trust in the Lord. We trust in you. Bev <clears throat> is running a course on dying with dignity on Thursday. However, it is full. If you would still like to come to that, phone the office and get your name on the list. And if enough are, are interested, then she'll run a second one. Library books. Did you borrow a library book from the church? Do you still have it at home that you have finished reading, are no longer going to read it? Bring it back so Dee can, can um, get a, a, a number on this. Vacation Bible School doesn't happen until July. However, we do need to plan for it. So please sign up. Sign up your children, your grandchildren. Sign yourself up to help. It will be a fun week. Mornings only, not all day like school. Mornings only. <laughs> June 11th, uh, free concert in support of the Canadian Food Grains Bank that we learned about um, last month. Movie night. Have you been to a movie lately? I know I haven't. Well, this Friday you can go to a movie. Salvation Army are showing the movie Overcomer. You will not be able to see it at a theater. It's only at the Salvation Army. 6.30 is showtime, and it's free. So come then. Certainly. Even though it's free, I understand, you still need to get a ticket. Oh, okay. okay. You still have to reserve, so to speak. So I believe you call ahead. All right. Okay. All right. Overcomer. And the ticket says, from the creators of War Room. And now Lori has an announcement for us from Session. Good morning. Well, I have a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, this past week we had our session meeting and a few decisions were made that we felt we would like to share with you. The first one is that we have within our church a group of three people who have formed a refugee committee looking into sponsoring a family by our church. And session has given approval for this committee to continue and they are looking for us uh, to support the committee and to help getting them resources, both uh, as including financial, human, and in kind. And this is to support a refugee family or a couple or an individual that might come to Owen Sound for a period of six months. So our commitment is just for six months and um, we will keep you informed about the committee's progress as as they uh, continue to work on investigating. Now the next thing I'm going to read is something uh, that has to do with our new elders. You know that we've been, been campaigning to find three new elders, and we did. The session of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Owen Sound, have completed the necessary steps of approval toward admission to the session for Tina Farquharson, and Ken Frook, who were previously ordained as elders. Joanne Howell will also be admitted to session and will be ordained. These three congregational members have been called to be ruling elders on the session of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Owen Sound, Ontario. And notice is hereby given that the congregation of the said St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church will admit or, or ordain these members on the 19th day of June in the year 2022 at the two Sunday service worship services. Ken Frook and Joanne Howell will be, be admitted at the 9 a.m. worship service and Tina Farquharson will be admitted at the 10.30 a.m. worship service. 
Notice is hereby given to all concerned that if any of you have any objection to, uh, to offer to the life or doctrine of said Tina Farquharson, Ken Frook, and Joanne Howell, that they are to contact myself, the clerk of session of St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Owen Sound, Ontario. If no valid objection is then made, the session shall proceed without further delay. Thank you. Let's stand, we're just going to sing a couple of chords of that last song we did for a couple of benediction. When you don't move the mountains, I needed you to move. When you don't pop the waters, I wish I could walk you. When you don't give the answers, as I cry out. just want to announce one last thing before the benediction, and that is next week Sunday, in both of the worship services, a very short congregational meeting to approve the names of the three elders. Next week Sunday after the service, again, a very short meeting, okay, of the congregation. Lift up your hearts to God. Receive his blessing and go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father, the fellowship, the communion, the guidance of the Holy Spirit in which we can trust, be and abide with you always this day, tomorrow, the day after that, and forevermore. Amen. You're dismissed.